What up, what up? Wimbush here. And today I'm excited to welcome you to day two of learning Unreal Engine for beginners. Now in this chapter, we're gonna create a logo animation completely from scratch using Unreal Engine 5. And then from there, we're gonna render out a couple of passes that we could then later composite everything in the After Effects and make something that looks like this. And before we get started, make sure you get to my store here. The link will be down in the description, but this is where you can download all the files that will correlate with this chapter. All right, so let's get started. So currently I have the Epic Games Launcher open right now, and we're gonna to wanna to open Unreal Engine 5. So if I look at my launcher right now, we can easily come over here to the top right hand corner and hit launch Unreal Engine 5.03, which is the latest version as of right now. If it doesn't say version five, you would just click on this down arrow and you can actually see we have all the different versions in here. Or another way we can access this, if we come over to our library tab, you can see all the different engine versions right here and you can launch it from here as well. So I'm just gonna click launch and I'm gonna let everything roll out. And while we're waiting for this to load up, if you wanted to bypass the Epic Games launcher every time you want to open up Unreal, we can actually create a shortcut from within so that we can always go directly to Unreal and not have to launch this on the side. And so in order to do that, I'm inside the library tab right here. And you see right here where we have Unreal Engine 5, if we click on the down arrow, you can actually create a shortcut right here. And then if I hit my Windows button on my keyboard, you can see right here at the top, we have Unreal Engine and we can automatically launch it from there. And so you don't have to go to the Epic Games launcher every single time you wanna to go to Unreal, which will save you a step. And speaking of Unreal Engine 5, this is gonna be the browser tab that we're gonna see. So what we wanna focus on here, we're gonna create a cinematic, we wanna do a logo animation. And so in order to do that, I'm gonna come over here to film, video and live events. And I'm actually going to just start with a blank template here. I don't need any of this other stuff, just gonna keep it blank. Now, currently I have it saving to my desktop and then under project name, I'm gonna just name this Unreal Logo. And the thing with Unreal Engine, it doesn't like spaces at all. And so if I click the space, you can actually see project's name do not contain the space. And so if you wanted to like separate it, you can always hold down shift and hit underscore like so. And that way we can add a space in between there, but we can't add a space with a space bar. And so from here, if you have a ray tracing enabled card, which is a 20 series and up, I will actually wanna click on this to add ray tracing. And I think that's gonna be it. And so I'm gonna click create down here in the lower right hand corner and let everything load up. Now, if this is your first time opening up Unreal Engine 5, it's probably gonna take a little bit to load up. There's gonna be something called compiling shaders, which you're gonna see once Unreal Engine opens up. Now, depending on your system specs, this could either take a few moments or this could take a fairly long time. So if it does say compiling shaders, I would just say, let it load and then go back to it whenever it's ready. And so right now I'm inside of Unreal Engine 5 and what I'm gonna do down here in the lower right hand corner, this always pops up for whatever reason. It says, would you like to update your project file? I always just click update and there we go like that. I'm gonna move my outliner to the side, just give us some more room inside of our viewport. And we're gonna get started by bringing in a logo that I created inside of Cinema 4D. Now we're gonna make this simple because we kind of wanna just cover the basics of being able to lay keyframes in, putting a camera in, doing some rendering, and then we could also render out some different passes so that we could composite later inside of After Effects. And for those curious on how I actually created the logo, this is my file here inside of Cinema 4D. I can actually put this into a project file so you guys can have it. But don't worry, we're not gonna cover any Cinema stuff here. I already built everything out so we could do everything inside of Unreal. And so what I did was I created this logo, made it into an FBX, and from there, we're gonna drag it into Unreal Engine. And speaking of which, let me go over to my Windows Explorer right here. And you can see that I have my FBX right here. So it's just called Unreal Engine logo. And before I do that, actually let me come down here into my content browser. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna add a folder. And I'm just gonna name this one FBX. And if you don't see your content browser down here, actually let me exit this out. So normally when you start Unreal Engine 5, this is what it's gonna look like. And if you look down here in the lower left hand corner, it says content drawer. Now, if you click on this, it's gonna bring it up. And then if you click back off, it makes it go back into a minimized state. For me personally, I always like having my content browser down there. And so I dock it to my panel. So again, I'm gonna click on content drawer. And then right here on the right hand side, I'm going to dock in a layout. 
and that's always going to have it right there and so it doesn't disappear or anything like that but if you need more real estate you could do it the other way where it's undocked and so moving on i'm going to come over here to my folder fbx double click on this and now i'm gonna go back to my windows explorer find my fbx logo which i have right here i'm going to left click drag it into my content browser and this should open up the fbx import options now i'm going to leave everything at default here i know one thing that a lot of people ask me whenever they import fbx's inside of unreal sometimes they will be exploded depending on how that different fbx was made and so if you want to bring it in as one big unit you come over here to advance and right here we have combined meshes but i want to keep my meshes separated so that we can actually independently animate each thing inside our fbx and so i'm going to leave this off but this is just a tip for anybody else that wanted to combine their mesh and then down here i'm just going to click import all and here we are we have our fbx and we have some materials inside of here and this is going to come up with the message log we're just going to actually exit this out and then inside of my viewport here i'm actually going to start deleting a lot of this stuff so my floor I'm going to delete that. I'm going to delete the player start. Let me actually drag out my outliner so we can see it better. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to delete my sky sphere, the skylight, reflection capture, atmospheric fog. And I'm going to leave my light source in for right now, just so as we're starting to drag some of this stuff into our scene, we can actually see it. But I'm going to delete this as well and just light from scratch. So what I'm going to do is come right here where we see the U from the Unreal logo. I'm just going to left click and drag that into my scene like so. I'm going to do the same thing for the circle here. And I'm going to click and drag this in here. And as you can see, everything is kind of off centered. Like if I look over here inside of my details panel, you can see the location isn't exactly centered, which we had it built inside of cinema. So all I have to do is come over here and just reset it. And it's going to put it in absolute zero like so. So there we go. Now we have our logo inside of our scene here. And as you can see, let me actually make this the right way. And I'm going to move my light up here as well, just so we can see a little bit better. So just rotate it. There we go. So we can see our U and we can see our O or a circle, whatever we want to call it there. And as you can see, I have the red is going to be representing the bevel on our logo here. And then the green is going to represent everything else. And so I'm basically going to be using some mega scans material to texture everything out. And so for my bevel, I want to make that gold. And then for everything else, I want to make that silver just so we can have some shiny metallic reflections going on on our logo here. And so in order to do that, what I'm going to do is come over here where we have this little cube with the plus sign. And I'm going to come down here to Quixel Bridge. And this is going to open up the mega scans library now for those not familiar the mega scans library is a whole plethora of different assets and so we have everything from 3d models we have textures we have decals we have a whole lot of stuff just thousands of thousands upon assets in here and so the quickest way to kind of find what you want is just to come right here to the search bar and so i'm going to click on gold and this is going to bring up a couple of different categories and so what we want would be surfaces and then down here, we would click on metal and I already have it downloaded. And when you have stuff downloaded already, you'll have the little check mark here. And so I'm going to click on this and this is going to give you some options for the quality. Like for this one right here, I'm just going to do highest. I already have it downloaded. And so what I could do is hit the add button and it's going to make a folder down here inside of our content browser. So let me minimize this and let me move this up a little bit. My content browser. And you can see that it made a mega scans folder it made a surface folder and then it has our texture in here like so so i'm going to do the same thing for our silver material but the one thing you want to notice i did the highest quality and so down here you can see it's actually an ak texture if your machine can't handle ak like ak is kind of overkill especially for this you might want to do just a high quality or a medium which would do like a 2k or a 4k texture and so going back into mega scans here I'm actually going to click on this little computer button because these are all the things that I already have downloaded and which I already have some silver materials downloaded right here. So I'm going to left click on this same thing. I'm just going to go with the highest quality, but again, that's going to do 8K. So if you go to high quality, that'd be 4K medium will be 2K and I believe low quality is 1K. But since I already have it downloaded to my system, I'm just going to click the add button right here. And then that's all I'm going to need from the Mega Scans library. We're going to go further into this into some later chapters. But for this one, these are the only materials that we're going to need. So I'm going to exit this out. And then down here, you can see we actually have a silver material as well. So there's a couple ways that we could go about materializing this. The first way is if you click on your item here 
and you look over here in your details panel and then i'm just going to use my mouse wheel to scroll down you can see that we have our two elements right here we have the green which represents everything else and we have the red which represents the bevel so if i want to left click and drag it over here to where i have my green you can see now it actually laid that material on our U in which everything isn't lit yet, so it's not going to look great. But again, if I want to come over here to gold, there's a second way we can actually materialize this stuff as well. So with my object selected, I'm going to left click on my gold material and I'm going to drag it over the bevel. And that's automatically going to put it on a hair. And you can see that it replicated it here inside of our details panel as well. So that's just a few ways that you can actually go to materialize some stuff. If I don't have like a big scene with a lot of stuff in it, I usually just like dragging and dropping it in. So I left click, I'm going to drag it onto my circle here. And then I'm going to come back down to silver. Same thing, left click, drag it there. And now I have everything materialized. And so from here, I'm happy with how everything is looking thus far. So I'm actually going to delete out my light source, which is going to make everything completely black in which you're probably wondering why would I delete everything out and make it pitch black? And that's because I typically like to light my scenes from scratch. And so the best way that I found to do it is if we actually come up here to window, come down here to environmental light mixture. This is going to bring up a panel in which we could just kind of click and start adding some lights in. So what I'm going to do for this particular scene I'm actually going to create an atmospheric light in which we can see we have our directional light in here. I'm going to come over here to where it says create skylight and I'm going to click on that. Now you might be wondering why do I want to add a skylight and that's because I want to add an HDR into this scene in which if I come down here to where it says light when I have my skylight selected we have a source type right here. And if I click on this and I come down to cube map we can actually add an HDR inside this little cube map box right here. So I'm going to come back over to my content browser. I'm going to right click. I'm going to make a new folder and I'm just going to name this one HDRI and I'm going to double click on that. And before I proceed, I'm actually going to save all just because it's good practice to save everything in your scene. And while that's saving out, let me actually show you this website that I like getting a lot of free HDRs from. So if I come down here to my Firefox, you can see that we're at Polyhaven, which used to be hdrihaven.com, but now they have more than just HDRs. They have textures, they have models, and but what I wanna do, I'm actually gonna click got it right here. And then over here where it says HDRs, I wanna browse HDRs, and this will give you a whole plethora of different HDRs that you can actually download absolutely free. So these HDRs go up to 16K. I typically like to do four to 8K. Usually the higher that you go, the more calculation time it's gonna use in Unreal. So 4K is typically a good mark spot for us to use for our lighting. I already have some stuff downloaded, but I just wanted to put this on your radar in case you wanted some free HDRs that you could download. So like I was saying before, I downloaded a bunch of HDRs off that site. So I'm just going to scroll down until I find something that I like here in which this one is pretty good. So it's Kyra 8 sunset underscore 4K. I have an 8K one downloaded as well, but I'm just going to stick with the 4K right here. So I'm just going to left click, drag it into my content browser. Then I'm going to close out Adobe Bridge. And there we go. So now we have an HDR inside of our scene here. I'm going to come over to my directional light. And if I scroll down here in my details panel, I'm actually just going to turn this off. So where it says intensity, I'm going to click zero. And that's because I want to see exactly what my HDR is doing in my scene. So if I come back over here to skylight, if I click on my HDR that I just brought in, I'm going to left click, drag it into here. Now you can see our scene is completely lit by our HDR, which is giving us some really cool reflections in here and everything. But I want to do something to kind of kill that exposure there. I want to have a more controlled exposure inside of our scene. So in order to do that, I'm going to add a post process volume in which let me scroll this down a little bit here so we can see everything in our outliner. So what I want to do is come over here where this box is again that has a plus sign. I'm going to click on this and then I'm going to come down here to visual effects. And I want to click on this top one. This is post process volume. So what this is going to do, it's going to add this binding box into our scene in which if I come back down here to my details panel, I'm just going to zero this out so it's in direct center. But basically, a post process volume, there's a whole lot of stuff. We're going to be using this a lot throughout the course. But for this particular instance, I want to use it to control the lighting inside of my scene. And so with it selected, I'm going to come down here to the search bar and I'm going to type in UMB. And that's going to quickly bring us to this little attribute here that's called infinite extent unbound. 
Now, whenever I click this on, that means that anything I do inside the post pros volume is going to be engulfed in our entire scene. Without that selected, only the stuff that's inside this bonding box right here is going to be infected by the scene. So I'm actually going to exit this back out. And if I come down here, we have an exposure attribute, which if I let click on this, let me scroll this up a little bit. I want to come down here to where we see men EV 100. I'm going to turn this on and max EV 100. I'm going to turn this on. Now I want to come down here and I want to make them both one. And as you can see in the scene, the lighting already dimmed down a little bit. Now what this is going to do is basically by default, Unreal Engine tries to replicate what it's like whenever you're getting exposed to the light, especially like the sunlight. And so typically, if you're working inside a video game, say like you're inside of a house and then you walk outside, you know how your eyes have to adjust to the different exposures of the sun, depending on what time of day it is. Sometimes it's blowing out and it takes a second for your eyes to adjust. Well, Unreal Engine tries to replicate that. So what we did right here, we turned that off. So whatever lighting that we're going to be doing is absolute. And then one other thing I want to do in my post pros volume is actually turn off the motion blur. So if I come back down here to search and if I type in motion, you can see we have the attribute for motion blur and which amount I'm going to come down here hit zero and turn that off. So moving on here, I'm going to come back down here to save all again. Make sure our save selected. It's good practice to save our scene and everything. And before we move on, I think I want to start organizing my scene here inside the outliner. I want to come over here to where it says main. And if I right click on it, we can actually create a folder. So I typically like to do this from the start, but I just started without doing, I just started dragging stuff into my scene. But typically I would do FX and that's going to be like for all my lighting and post effects. So I'm going to click on my light. I'm going to hold down the shift key, come down here to skylight, left click, drag it into this folder. Then I'm going to right click again, create folder. And then I'm just going to name this one logo like so. Then I'm going to take my different FBX items in here and just drag it into there. And then I'm going to right click again and I'm going to make a folder and I'm going to name this one sequence because we're going to start animating everything in our scene now. And so for those that aren't familiar with Unreal Engine, the sequencer is basically our timeline. And so in order to do any type of animations in Unreal and be able to render it out, everything has to be inside of the timeline, AKA the sequencer. So in order to add that, I'm going to come up here to the top where we see this little clipboard. I'm going to left click on this and then I'm going to add this top one right here where it says add level sequence. Now it's going to bring up a folder and it's going to say save as. And so this is going to be everything inside of our content folder. As you can see, it correlates with everything down here. So I'm just going to right click, make a new folder. And I'm just going to name this one sequences because this is where we're going to have all of our timelines in double click that. And then down here for name, I'm just going to do unreal underscore logo underscore version one. I'm going to click on save. And I usually do version one just because I like versioning stuff out. But basically, here we are. We're inside of our sequencer here, AKA our timeline. And so what I wanna do first is I wanna change the frame rate. Now, typically I know a lot of people like working at 30 and they like working at 24, but me, I like working at 60 because we're gonna utilize real time rendering anyway. And so I like higher frame rates and 60 is a really good sweet spot. Then I'm gonna click on save here. And the next thing I wanna do is actually add a camera. Now there's a couple of different ways that we can add cameras, which again, throughout this course, we're going to go through those different ways. But for this one, the most simplistic way to do it is to add it right from the sequencer. So if I look over here on my left hand side, we actually have a little icon that looks like a camera. I'm going to left click on this. And as you can see, our screen popped and that's because we're looking through our camera right now. And if I scroll this up, you can actually see we have our camera down here, a cinema camera actor, and then we have a camera cuts in which I'm going to delete this. You don't have to delete it, but I just want to show you guys something later on because the camera cuts is going to be extremely important. That's the only way that we're able to render stuff out. And I want to show you guys how we can bring it in from scratch in case you delete it on accident. And so right now I only have my camera in here and I'm actually going to save once again. And then holding down the right click on my mouse button, I'm going to hit W, hit A, just to kind of line this up. And once again, I forgot, I'm looking through my camera. So what I want to do actually is I want to center everything up. So I'm going to come over here to my outliner. I'm going to click on this with the clipboard. This is actually our sequence, so I could drop this in the folder. I'm going to right click, create a new folder. And I'm just going to name this one camera. So I can put my camera in here as well. 
because within any typical scene we can have multiple cameras you want you can have as many cameras as you want but for this one if we come over to content browser and you hit save all that's going to save everything inside the scene if we hit the save button in the sequencer it's only going to save the changes that you made in the sequencer so that's another thing that you might be aware of so typically i like coming over to the content browser hitting save all and we're good to go so i'm going to come back over here to my sequencer then i'm going to click on my camera here in my outliner and i want to come down here to where i have my transform tools now i want to zero everything out because i like working from absolute center so i'm going to come down here to where it says reset the property default value click on this and that's going to change our location to zero 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 i'm going to do the same thing for rotation and it looks like we're inside of our logo right now so if i actually come right here on my location i'm going to take this first one and i'm going to scroll it back negative to pull back and you can see our logo we're actually looking at it from the side so we're going to want to fix this so we're looking at everything straight on now if i come over here to my logo my folder right here my logo folder you can see that we have the two different items we have the u and we have the circle now we could change these independently or we could put this inside of a null now there's a few ways to go about this like i'm going to show you the first way because this is the way that you're supposed to do it but i'm not really keen to it i'm going to show you the way that i typically do it which gives you a lot more control so if i select both of these and actually let me come over here to we have this eject button i'm going to eject myself out of my camera so i don't mess it up but i can still go around my viewport as i need to and there we go let me just center this up so we can see what's going on better so if you're working in like another program like cinema 40 usually you would like group these together and then it would make a null in which you could use the null to rotate or move the position and everything inside that null would move along with it now with unreal if i right click and i come down here to where it says group and select that you can see that it made like a group icon in which let me click off of it and then click group icon again you can see that it selects everything that's inside of it which doesn't really work like a null and if i go into my viewport and i actually move it you can see that it's moving everything and not just the group actor so basically the group actor is kind of working as like a select all in which i don't really like using plus you can't animate this inside the sequencer like if i left click drag it into my sequencer you can see it brought everything in with it but it doesn't have any transforms like it has the transform tools for a circle and for a u in which if i want to move these independently let's say like i do the roll on there i could do that but if i wanted to do these both together and i click on group there's no transform tools here now we can add them like by coming over by track come down here to transform and it's going to add some tools here but if i scroll down here to rotate again and i start moving these nothing is moving at all and so that's not how I typically like to work. Like if I want to have something encompassed inside of a null, I want to be able to control everything with that null and its parameters. And so my workaround is actually bringing in the object, making an absolute zero, and then making that object a parent of whatever I want to have underneath it. So I'm going to actually control Z out of all of this stuff here. I'm going to close that folder. And now I'm going to come over here to where we have this box with the plus sign. I'm going to come down here to shapes and i'm just going to add a sphere so with the sphere i want to make sure it's at the center of everything here so i'm going to come down here to location i'm going to reset the property value to where everything is all centered up and then for scale i'm actually going to come down here and i'm going to lock it now when you have it locked no matter which one of these you move it's going to move all of them in unison if you don't have it locked it's going to do everything independently so again i want to come down here to lock and i'm just going to make this a scale of like 0.001 so we don't see it at all inside of our scene here and then if i click on sphere again i'm going to drag it into my logo folder right here and then i'm going to select each one of my items here and i'm going to left click and drag it under my sphere and now my sphere is almost acting like a null but actually i like renaming it too just so it will say null so if i double click on it it's going to add a rename here and I'm just going to name this one no logo like so and if it doesn't work if you double click on it sometimes it just like zooms you back into where you need to be inside the viewport if I right click on it and I come down to edit you can rename it from here or the shortcut is f2 for that so what I want to do now is actually left click on this I'm going to drag it into my sequencer and now you can see we have our logo and we can actually start moving this around so if I do the roll now everything is working in unison like i want it let me put this back to zero 
because it looks like our sphere is in the direct center of our logo here so i can independently actually come down here and select both of these and i'm just going to move them over a little bit and it's snapping so it should be better like that so let me move this somewhere right there let me click back on logo so it looks like it's in the center of it now so now that we have everything encompassed inside of our fake null here inside of unreal engine i think what we're going to do is work on the lighting and then we're going to move on to animation and then rendering from there and so what i want to do is come back over here to my fx folder i'm going to come down here to skylight and let's come down here to intensity scale and i'm going to zero it out and let me actually move this down so we can see a little bit better what we're doing and so what I want to do now is basically I'm going to increase the scale just by small increments just because I want to see the reflections that I'm getting inside of my logo here, which I think that one looks good. Maybe like 0.7 for my intensity scale somewhere around there. And then it looks like we have some roughness going on inside of our material here in which I'm going to change that up. So if I come back over here to my content browser, I'm going to come back down here and let's start with the silver first. So if I double click on the silver, that's gonna pop up a browser for all the things materials in here. Now I'm not gonna go through all the material settings here. I'm just gonna show us exactly what we need to get moving. But for now, what I'm gonna do is come down here to roughness. I'm gonna click on max roughness. Maybe let's change this to like 0.2. And you can already see we're getting way more shiny reflections in here. And I'm gonna do the same thing for gold. But before I do that, you wanna click on save here. Then I'm gonna come back down here to my content browser double click on my gold and with my gold opened up i'm going to do the same thing so come down here to roughness turn on max roughness do like 0.2 and make that extra shiny there as well now if you look through here like mega scans will automatically build out all this stuff for you like normally you'd have to go through and manually put your nodes in but i like mega scans because it puts all the different attributes in here for you in which you can kind of just slide through and put in the numerical values that you need so moving on I'm going to hit exit that out and now we can see we have some really nice reflections going on with our logo here in which maybe i should look through my camera so i'm going to come back over here to my sequencer click on my camera make sure my camera is centered up and i'm going to move my camera back a little bit like so because i want to make sure our logo is front facing so i'm going to come back here to my logos folder click on my null that i made there and i'm just going to rotate this right here in the blue and make it 90 degrees and that way i make sure that all the lighting stuff that i'm doing is going to be correct for when i'm looking through my camera so i'm going to come back down here to skylight and i'm going to scroll down to where i had my lighting intensity before so let's maybe just take it back to default one and then i'm going to come back here to my directional light let's move up our intensity a little bit but actually let me zero this out and let's see if i start moving our rotation here what kind of glint I could get on my sides here in which I like it how it's hitting right there and I actually want to see so I'm going to save this everything out here and I'm actually going to see if I could bring in a different HDR just to kind of see what different result I'm going to get so I'm going to go back to my Adobe bridge and let me see let me scroll down here let me see if I can find a different one so let me try this one this is Cape Hill 4k I'm going to click back on my skylight come back here to where it says cube map i'm gonna left click drag this in here and i kind of like how that one is looking better again i'm going to save all save selected let me just come back and check one more time maybe just because i like trying different hdrs just kind of seeing the different results that i'm going to get so let me scroll down let me see if there's anything else maybe this one right here the simon towns rocks it's always a good idea just to kind of play around with hdr see what kind of results you're going to get so i like the gold reflections that i'm kind of getting with this one so i'm going to stick with this one so simons underscore town underscore rocks underscore 4k save all save selected then i'm going to come back over to my directional light let's see let me rotate this around a little bit till i get something that i'm happy with somewhere around there where it's just kind of coming off the side a little bit like so I really like the glint that I'm getting over here. and But this is a little bit dark down here. So what I'm going to actually do is come back over here. We come over here a lot where this little square is. I'm going to left click, come down to lights, 
and I'm going to add a rectangular light. So if I click on this and actually let me come out of my camera again. So I'm going to eject my camera so I can move around my viewport freely. And I'm just going to look at my light, maybe bring it in a little bit. You can see the reflection that we're getting off our logo here, which is really cool. But the reason I like the rectangular light is because we have some cool stuff down here. Like we have barn doors. We can actually change like the width and the height. So if I change the width all the way over, change the height up like so, something like that. I'm going to make it movable. I will always want to have my lights movable so it's not big lighting or anything. And let's see what happens if I change like my barn door length. So nothing too crazy going on here. I just kind of want to encompass my whole logo here. So let me come down and see what my intensity is. Maybe let's drop this down to like three instead of the default eight that it was on. You can maybe move this back a tad bit. Something like that. And then let's look back through our camera again. So again, I'm going to come down here. Or if you don't want to do it inside of the sequencer, we can actually come up here to perspective. Come down here to where it says send a camera actor. And you can select your cameras from here as well. So now I'm looking inside of my camera. And if you want to see it in like the cinematic view, you would click on perspective again. Cinematic viewport. And this will actually give us like the play button and everything in here. But I don't know about you guys, but I'm thinking that's looking pretty good. So... From here, we're going to move on to some animation. So I'm going to save everything again. Come inside of my sequencer here. And I'm going to come over here to my outliner. And I'm going to click and drag the null logo into my scene here. In fact, let me hit Control Z. I'm going to select all three of these and bring them in. So I'm going to do my null. I'm going to do my ring. And I'm going to do the U. So I'm going to left click, drag it into my sequencer. And I'm first going to start with the null. And so I'm going to move this over to maybe about 90 somewhere around here i'm going to go to transform and then i'm going to go to rotate and let's say for my yaw i want to go and make a keyframe like so so this little plus sign right here is our keyframes so select that you're going to have like a little red keyframe there then if i go all the way back to the beginning in which i could just hit this right here to go to front we also have the same controls down here in the lower left hand side as well but then let me rotate this like so so let's say we start at like 180. Then I'm going to select this arrow right here to go back to the keyframe because this is going to be our end position that we're creating right here. And I want to lay a keyframe from our roll as well. So I'm going to hit the plus symbol. Then I'm going to go back to the beginning. And let's say we want to make this like negative 90, somewhere around there. And it doesn't look like we're looking through our camera. So yeah, let me click on camera. There we go. So that's looking like a cool move right there. So what I want to do now is maybe I want to have it. So like we're looking at the reflection of like this tip of the U and then we're going to have footage playing in here. I'm going to add that in after effects, but let's start with this ring, maybe not in this final position. So I want to have it as we're scrolling back, the ring is going to rotate with it until we lock into our position right there as the camera keeps drifting back. So I'm going to select my ring. I'm going to actually fold this up. I'm going to come down here to my transform for my circle here. Hit rotate. And then let's say, so it is the yaw here. So I'm going to lay a keyframe for my yaw. Then go back to the start. And let's say for the first one, for the um, start frame here, let's make this 90. So now if we play through, you can see exactly what we're going for here. So I'm going to click play. And there we go. So all we have left now is to just move the camera in here in which I'm going to have it lock right here. So I could probably move my camera back a tad bit more. So I'm going to click on my camera, come down here into my transform and I want to do location and I'm going to move it back a tiny bit in here. So I like working in absolute increments. So right here I have negative 1530 and I'm going to lay keyframe here. Then I'm going to go back to the start. And let's move this in like so. And it looks like we're going to have to move it down a tad bit, but I'm going to lay this keyframe first. So I'm going to do like negative 125. Then let me go back to the start or my frame 90, somewhere around there. So let's see which one we need to move. I think it's going to be Z. Yeah, there we go. So I actually want to come back to my frame 90. And I'm going to lay keyframe on my Z right here from my transform location. 
then I'm going to come back here to the beginning and let's move this up. So it's inside the frame here. So the one thing you might notice here inside the viewport that the camera is extremely blurry right now, and that's because it has an autofocus going on right now. Now there's a couple of ways that you can fix this. You can manually adjust it. You can have like an autofocus based on what it's looking at. What I'm going to do right here, I'm going to actually override it so we have no focus. So everything is just sharp. So if I come over here to my outliner and I come over here to camera, I'm going to select on my camera and then in my details panel, I'm going to scroll down and this is where we have all the attributes for cameras. But the one that we're looking for is right here where it says focus setting and where it says focus method for right now, I'm just going to put do not override. Actually, I'm going to disable it. And that way, as we're scrolling back, not everything is just in focus in which let me actually look at this from like a top view because I just want to make sure we're not intersecting any of our geometry at all. So let me come in here. Let me see where my camera is. So yeah, my camera is actually intersecting my geometry right there. So I'm going to actually just move it over to the right a little bit like so. So let me come down here. I'm going to come down here to my sequencer, my location. Let me come back to frame 90. I'm going to lay a keyframe there and then come back to the start keyframe. And I'm going to move this over to the right like so. Now let me look through my camera again. Let me click play. And there we go. So that's a lot more cleaner there. And as you can see, it's kind of abrupt as we're pulling back. Let me actually, I want to move my camera down on my Z just a little bit more. So maybe like negative 15. I'm going to click play. And there we go. So that's pretty nice as we're moving back there. But we can, you know, we can always make it a little bit better. So in order to do that, I'm actually going to come over here and I'm going to mess with some curves. So I want to make sure I have these selected. And right here next to the FPS, we have a curve editor in which I want to left click on this and brought it up in my second panel here. But here we go. So we have our curves adjuster here and it looks like it didn't select our keyframes, but that's OK. What we're going to do is do it ourselves anyway. So I'm going to click on X, Y and Z in here. Then I'm going to select the front ones here. I want to come over here to where it says toggle weighted tangents. I'm going to select this. And this is going to give us car blanche to move these out. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and then left click and drag on the handle here. And you can see I'm actually controlling my curve and everything there. So let me minimize this and let me play it back inside my viewport. And I kind of like that, but it's still moving a little bit fast. So I might actually move my keyframes out a little bit here. So let me actually select these like so. Let's make this a little bit slower. So maybe let's drag it out to 150. There you go. Something like that is nice. So I want to do that for my other keyframes as well. So let's move these out. So everything is locking up at once. So I'm going to select these, move these out to 150. Same thing for my circle here. Select this, drag it out to 150. Now let's play it back. There we go. So we have a nice elegant move here. And everything looks cool because we're going to actually have footage playing within here, which is going to look cool. It's going to be reflective, pull back, wipe it, and then we resolve at the logo. So we don't want to have it just stop like so. So we always want to have some type of drift there. So what I'm going to do is come back over to my camera. And this drift is back just a tiny bit. 17. Let's see what that looks like. So negative 1700 on the X. Yeah, and I kind of like the way that is moving back as well. So I can actually come down here and let's drag this out a little bit. Let's drag it out to maybe like 500 frames instead of our viewport. And if I left click and I move around a little indicator here instead of my timeline, let's move this back to maybe like 360. And then what we could do right here is we can actually come down here to the left. In the lower left hand corner, I want to change the right bracket, click on that, and that's going to make our sequence 360 frames. So now if I go back to the beginning and play it through, you can see our timeline goes all the way to 360, but it stopped abruptly because we don't have our last keyframe there. So I'm going to make our last keyframe 360 last time, play it through. 
and boom we have a nice elegant camera animation we have a cool logo animation and i think we're ready to export this out so the next thing i want to show you guys is the movie vendor queue that's how we're going to export this out and then we're going to be good to go if you want to take it like an extra step and actually do some compositing inside of after effects as a bonus i'll show you how to do that as well but first let me show you how we could get this out with multi-pass rendering and actually crypto mats as well now there's a few things we want to do before we start rendering so let me actually fold these in so we can see it's a little bit better because remember at the beginning when i started adding the sequencer it has something in there called a camera cuts track in which that is going to be how we render everything out like we tell the camera like this is the camera that we want to use here the reason that the camera cut is so important because we can make unreal almost like a non-linear editor so anybody that's used like black magic resolve or adobe premiere it's going to work in that same sequence so remember that i said before we can add multiple cameras in here if you wanted to have more than one camera move you can actually place a camera in make a camera cut for that and then edit another camera and everything inside the timeline will render out in which we could go into in another section but for this we're just going to start with the simple camera move that we have here so i'm going to come down here to where it says track and i'm going to left click on this and up here we have a camera cuts track now once i have that selected right here where it says camera this is where we're going to select the camera that we want to use inside of our render so select this and I only have one camera in my scene, but if you have multiple cameras, it will all be selected right here. But I'm going to select that one right there. And as you can see, it comes up with this camera icon in which if you click on that camera, that's what you're going to be looking through. Now, if you notice, it looks like kind of like rendered footage, like when you're editing in Premiere or something. So we can actually move this in and out. So let's say like if we only wanted this to play for 120 frames, you play that through. And then that's your cut right there now we can add multiple cameras in here so let's say that like we wanted it to cut right there if i come back over to camera and if i had another camera i would select it but it would actually add it there and you can start editing in here which is really cool and so we're not going to get into that too much here but that just shows you the options that we have instead of unreal if you watch the previous chapter here it kind of had that already laid out in there so you can always go into that default project and play around with it but for this one, we just wanted to cover the full 360 in which it's good practice to kind of have it go before your start bracket here and after your start bracket, just because sometimes it needs some warm-up frames in there. But it looks like we're good to go there. So from here, there's a couple ways that we could get to the render window. The easiest way would be inside the sequence window right here. There's this little clipboard. If you left click on this one, that's going to bring up the movie render queue and it's automatically going to have our sequence inside of here so remember before we named our sequence unreal underscore logo underscore version one if you have multiple sequences in here you can actually render those out in unison and then another way that we could get to the movie render queue let me exit this out if we come up here to where it says window and i come down here to cinematics right here movie render queue you select that and then that's going to bring this up in here now this isn't always gonna show up in here. Like if you do it from the sequencer, this is gonna show up here. But if you do it from the Windows tab, it's not gonna be in there. So let me actually delete that just to kind of show you guys if it doesn't show up there. If we click on this green render button, this is gonna show all the different sequences that we have. So if we have multiple animation sequences or timelines, you can actually select which one that you wanna start working with. So I'm gonna select this one right here. And then from here, I'm gonna come over here to settings where it says unsaved config. I'm going to left click and this is where we're going to start setting up our render now by default it's going to be a jpeg sequence but since i want to show you guys multi-pass rendering we're going to want to use the exr but actually before we get into that let me exit this out because we do need to activate a plugin to allow multi-pass rendering for crypto mats so if i come up here to edit come down here to plugins we have our plugins panel right here in which if i search passes this is going to bring up movie render queue additional passes in which if you want to do crypto mats and stuff like that this is what you're going to need activated so i'm going to select this and it's going to tell me that this is in beta but it works fine i'm just going to click yes and then it's going to make you restart anytime that you activate a plugin you have to restart unreal engine so make sure that you save beforehand if you didn't save it's going to ask you to save anyway but it's just good practice right and there we have it so it looks like everything is good to go so now i'm going to go back to what i was doing before so i'm going to come over here click on this unsave config 
and then I'm actually going to delete my JPEG because I want to use an EXR. It's the only way right now we can actually do crypto mats. So if I come over here to settings and then I'm going to click on EXR, you can see the EXR is the only one that's 16 bit out of all the image sequences here. But if you wanted to do just like a quick time out of Unreal, you could do an Apple ProRes in which that's how we got Apple ProRes was by adding those additional render passes there. So if you don't see that in there, that's how you get it. You have to activate in your plugins. But let me go over here to EXR sequence and then I'm going to leave everything as is right here. And then down here where we have settings again, I'm going to click on this. So the first thing I guess we're going to do is come right here where it says reflections only. So I want to defer that out. So I have a reflections pass here. Let me scroll this over so we can see it. And that's all we need to do to add a reflections pass. Now, if I come back over here to settings again, this one, it says objects ID. This is how we're going to get our crypto mask. So I'm going to select this and we don't want to do anything else here. Like our ID type, I'm just going to do full. If you wanted to get down to the nitty gritty, they do have these other parameters. Like if you wanted to have them listed out by material or their layers but i usually just do full because it's going to automatically add our crypto mask for us and we don't have to worry about anything at all and if you wanted to add like a lighting pass or something like that you could do either lighting only or detailed lighting but for my render i'm just going to stick with the reflections pass and so in order to get crypto mask to enable you want to come right here where it says deferred rendering and i want to come right here first where it says post processing i want to disable multi-sample effects so the only caveat when you have this on it's going to automatically disable like your anti-aliasing and your motion blur and chromatic apparition some post effects that you have in there so if you are wanting to use crypto mats that's just something to be aware of make sure you read this disclaimer in here and then come in here where it says additional post process materials i'm going to select this one that says index zero and i'm going to enable this one right here and that should be everything that we need to do so the next step from here is we're going to come down here to settings and output what i want to do is where it says output directory i want to select these little three dots right here left click on it and i'm going to save it to my desktop so i'm going to make a new folder i'm just going to name this one pre-render like so and i'm going to select the folder and then right here where it says file name format this is the only one that we want to change right here where it says sequence name. You don't want to change out the frame number because this is very important if we want to bring this into like After Effects and stuff like that to do further compositing. So I'm actually going to change the sequence name right here. And I'm just going to name this one Unreal Logo. Now for my output resolution, I'm actually just going to multiply it by 1.5 for each side and the reason i'm doing that is because once i'm inside of after effects i'm going to be working at 1080 but i like rendering out a higher resolution and then compressing it down to 1080 a lot of times we'll get a sharper image when we do that so just raising it up by like 1.5 shouldn't give us too much more rendering time there and we should be fine so that's everything that we want to change in there so i'm going to click accept then i'm going to come down here to render local i'm going to click this on and we're going to watch the real time render and work its magic now as you can see the frames are moving pretty fast the reason that we see it moving a little bit slower here is because of the crypto mats so if we didn't do crypto mats at all this would pretty much be done by now but it's calculating all the crypto mats that we need so that we can mask it later inside of after effects or if you use other compositing softwares you're welcome to use whatever you need but for my example i'm going to show you guys how we can bring all these different crypto mats and we can bring the reflection pass into after effects for further compositing and there we have it so if that's all you wanted to learn how to do is do your basic camera animation and logo animation inside of unreal engine that's basically how you do it that's how you render everything out and you should be good to go for those that want to take it one step further and bring it into after effects to do some further compositing i'll show you how to do that now but again this after effects section is for those that want to take it one step further in which i'm in the latest version of after effects right now as you can see and i have a couple of folders already made but first let's start by bringing in our sequence so right here where it says pre-render i'm going to hit Control i on my keyboard then i'm going to go to my desktop i'm going to find my pre-render folder and i'm going to first select this and right here where it says open exr sequence make sure you have this check marked because this is going to bring in our file sequence if not it's only going to bring in the one file here so this is important to make sure you have on so i'm going to click import and now you can see we have our one file here so what i'm going to do now is just click and drag it into my timeline here 
and that's going to make a new comp right here called unreal logo it's basically just going to name it whatever your sequence was i'm going to put this into my comps folder like so and if i scroll through here you can see that we have our logo animation there so i want to show you guys how we can activate the crypto match so that we can actually use it for masking and stuff like that so with this selected in my timeline if i come over to my effects and presets panel if i type in crypto you can see under 3d channel we have crypto mat in which if i select this drag it onto my layer here you can see inside my effects panel we now it turned everything green here and this is to represent our cryptos and so if you want to select these mats basically you want to make sure that you have this selected you hold down the shift key on your keyboard and you right click and that's going to turn everything white from that crypto mat and down here under output where it says colors i'm going to do matted rgba and now you can see that it's only showing a mask for that thing so let me actually add in the transparency so we can see what's going on so now basically just that it's going to be what's masked out so if i wanted to do something like let's say bring like the fortnite footage in here and i want to have it live inside like that panel there what i would do is come right here where it says track mat click on none click on alpha mat now it's inside of there so no matter what as i'm scrolling back it's inside of our logo there which is really really cool in itself now the next thing that i want to show you guys let's bring this back in here after i delete it i want to show you how we could get access to our multi-pass there so remember we exported out a reflections pass and so if i want to get that right here again where it says effects and presets i'm going to come over here and i'm going to type in extractor in which again it's under our 3d panel but i'm going to select extractor i'm going to bring it here onto my layer and now right here where it says channel info this is going to be everything that we rendered out now these top three these came in here because we added crypto mats but that's not how we're going to access them like if i select it nothing happens on those but if i come down here and do reflections only in which now that gives us a reflection pass so if i bring in the same layer underneath it come over here to mode and click on screen now it's just adding an extra glare of reflections to our logo there which is really cool so you can see the power of what we're going for here like if we start adding the footage and we start adding you know the reflection layers and stuff like that we could really combine it to make a really cool animation here for unreal engine but i just wanted to show you guys how we could bring our different crypto mats and our different render passes into after effects now that we're familiar with after effects and how we could bring the unreal engine exr files into after effects let's continue building this animation and building it out to final completion so as you can see we're back in after effects and we're going to start with a blank composition so i'm going to come down here to where we have this little panel box and this is what's going to create our composition for us so if i left click on this you can see composition name i'm going to just name this one unreal logo animation like so and then i'm just going to keep it 1920 by 1080 i'm going to do 60 frames per second and for duration i could probably even knock this down to about seven seconds 30 something like that so we're going to hit okay and now we have our composition open in this blank so the first thing i'm going to do is take my pre-render from unreal engine i'm going to drop it into my composition window and let me move this over so we have a little bit more real estate we can see with and remember whenever we rendered this out of unreal engine we did it larger than our hd and that's because i wanted to have like a sharper image whenever i was doing my compositing and everything in after effects and so to get this to encompass the entire real estate area here i'm going to use some shortcut keys so i'm going to hold down Control alt and hit f and that's going to fill in our frame right here and if i come down here to my layer and hit s you can see that it did it evenly because we did everything in 16 by 9 when we rendered it out but we just rendered it at a higher resolution than hd so now that we have this in here let me play it through to see what our animation looks like and that looks pretty nice right there and what i want to do basically like before i have this logo animation play i want to have some footage playing in here first and then we're going to pull back to see our final resolve and everything so what i'm going to do is actually i'm going to bring this up to about one second because we're going to have like one second worth of footage playing then i'm going to slide this over in my timeline like so and actually if i hit the left bracket on my keyboard that's going to snap it to there and now what i'm going to do is right click on this layer and then i'm going to come over to time 
and I'm going to enable time remapping. And what this is going to do is allow us to drag out our frame on the front and on the end. And so basically it's going to keep my animation still right there because we time remapped it. So it's going to start at zero. And then once it goes to the keyframe, then it's going to start playing the animation. And then same thing at the end, it's just going to stop it right there as well, which should be more than enough for what we need. But before I'm going to proceed, I'm actually going to add some layers to this just to kind of bump this up. So let me actually get a full resolution right here. It's working at half. And if I come back over here to my effects and presets, I'm going to type in curves. And I'm just going to left click and drag it into my layer panel here. And you can see right here, like I have my layers and controls and everything just bumped to the side right here because it's easier for me to see. This is something that I did custom in After Effects. And so yours will probably come up here beside project, but you can always move these around and customize your UI. So I'm just going to click and drag this down a little bit, drag this part up high just to bring in some highlights, nothing too crazy. So if I turn it on and off, you can see that we're really starting to make our logo animation pop there. So I'm going to drag this back over and I'm going to hit control S because I want to save it. And so the next thing I want to do from here is I'm going to bring in the footage that I have here and don't worry, I'm going to make this absolutely available for you guys. So you can backward engineer my project here and you'll have all the project files. So you can also do this along at your home and at your own convenience. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to left click and drag this into my scene here. And there we go. And this one is actually larger. I think this was captured at 4k. So I'm going to do the same thing Hit control all F and that's going to snap it in. And I'm just going to find a good spot, which I like that one right there where we have spider Gwen. So I'm going to hold down the alt on my keyboard. I'm going to hit the left bracket on my keyboard, and that's going to pretty much make it snap to right here on my layers panel so that I can bring this all the way to the beginning, hit the left bracket again. And now there we go. So now if I play through, you can see we have some cool footage. And basically what's going to happen is right here at the one second mark, this is where the logo animation is going to pull back and we're going to resolve everything. And so what I want to do now is I'm going to take this right here, my bottom one with my Unreal Engine logo animation. I'm going to hit Control D and then I'm going to drag this up top and then I'm going to come back over here to my fix panel and I'm going to delete my curves. Now, remember before I showed you how we could bring in our crypto mats. So I'm just going to type in crypto like so. And I'm going to bring in the crypto mat let me play this animation out a little bit just so we can kind of see everything here so i'm actually going to go back down to half resolution so we'll work a little bit faster so i want to basically have the edge and the front have the footage in it but not the bevel so what i'm going to do is make sure i have crypto mat selected here in my fixed panel i'm going to hold down the shift key i'm going to right click and there we go so that's going to make our mats right there and then i'm going to come back over here to output I'm going to come down here to mat it RGBA. We want to left click on that. And there we go. So now we have an alpha channel with just those areas there. And then I'm going to have the footage pretty much encompass this. And so in order to do that, I'm going to click on my Fortnite footage and right here where it says track mat and it says none, I'm going to left click and then I'm going to hit alpha mat. So now our footage is actually inside of our logo now, which is really, really cool. So let me pull this up a little bit so we can see a little bit better. So right here, I'm going to actually fit to 100%. Hit Control S to save. And I'm going to try to organize this a little bit too. So I want to make sure that I know that these two correlate with each other. And I typically like to do it with these color palettes over here. So I'm going to hold down Shift, select both of these. And then I'm going to left click on this color. And let's just say orange. And this is just the easy way to organize our timeline for us so we know what's doing what. And I think whenever this ring comes across, I want this ring to wipe it out. So by the time we're here, we just see the logo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back down here to my Fortnite footage. I'm going to right click, come over to mask. Then I'm going to do a new mask. And if I scroll back here a little bit and if I hit M on my keyboard, you can see that's the shortcut for bringing up the mask. So if I select this and actually I have to turn this on right here where it says toggle mask. So now there we go. Now we see our mask here. Now we can also add points to this mask as well, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to come just scroll through my timeline until I see the, the circle start coming through. And I think I'm just going to add two more points right here. And it's pretty much going to be like an easy roto from here. So I'm just going to hit those like so. And then I'm going to come down here to my mask. I'm going to make a keyframe and I'm hitting page up on my keyboard just to move up in increments on my timeline. So I think I'm going to start my mask right here. And then if I hold down the shift and hit the page down key on my keyboard, it's going to jump it up 10 frames. So if I hit V, that's going to bring us back to our selection tool. And I'm just going to come down 
start moving my mask points like so hold down shift again hit page down then i'm just going to hold down the shift key and just move these points over to the left like so and then same thing hold down shift page down and i just want to keep doing this until that footage is completely wiped off so basically what i'm doing is i'm using this ring as an indicator to wipe off the footage so that we have our logo resolve here and everything looks good so i think that's going to do it so i'm just going to pull the mask all the way off now so we don't have anything else you know footage wise coming through our scene and then i'm going to hold down the alt key and left bracket and that's going to make sure that our footage is pretty much going to dead out from right here i'm going to do the same thing for the top layer hold down the alt key right bracket and there we go so now if i hit you on my keyboard hit it twice now everything is nice and tidy there hit control s and if i just scroll through here now we can see we have the ring wiping it off which is really cool so from this point on is basically just aesthetics from here because we have our basic move and everything in there everything looks cool and so what i'm going to do basically now is the footage is really really clean and we do have like a reflective surface on here so i'm going to come over and i'm going to add like a glass on here so i'm going to come back down to my fortnite footage come over here to my effects and presets and just type in glass and this actually comes with after effects so you want to use cc glass i'm going to left click select it onto my layer here and here under surface under bump map let me drag this out a little bit where it says fortnite i actually want to use the bottom unreal engine logo and i'm just going to use the source property i'm going to use the lightness so for displacement i could probably bump this up to like 500 now we're starting to see some ripples in here and reflections for height let's jump this up to like 100 and let's play this through so we're actually going to keyframe this effect too so it looks like as we're pulling back we're starting to get like that reflection type stuff happening in there so let's say we want to start the effects maybe at like one because that's where our logo animation is going to start at one second in so actually let me hold down the shift key hit page down maybe like three times no let me do it twice somewhere around there so i'm at like one second and 20 frames in so i'm going to add keyframes right here then select fortnite again hit you and that's going to bring up our keyframes here i'm going to go back to one second in and then i'm just going to zero all these out so i hit zero and then i hit tab to go back to the next attribute so now as we pull back now we can start seeing the ripple effect and everything happening to our footage and i probably want to add a little bit of tint to this so it's not so clean so maybe let's add like a tritone to it so I hit control s again come over here to my fix and presets and i'm going to type in tritone just going left click drag it in here and now you can see it gave us like this bronze look which i kind of don't want let me pull back and find a good color on my bevel so i kind of like this look instead so right here where it says mid-tone i'm going to left click on this eyedropper maybe let's pick this one yeah so i'm starting to like how that one looks and i want to bring a little bit of the footage color back in so i'll blend it at like 50 percent something like that then i'm going to do the same thing i'm just going to keyframe that right there so we'll say it like one second 20 seconds in we're going to add a keyframe go back to one second then i'm going to put this at 100 like so it says we're pulling back now the color's starting to change we're starting to get that glass effect we have the logo wipe off and everything is nice and clean in here so i think the last thing that i'm going to do for this tutorial is basically we're going to add a reflective pass in here so what i'm going to do is actually i'm going to take this bottom layer hit ctrl d to duplicate it bring it up to the top let's change the color to this one to like purple or something like that and i'm going to hit curves and i'm going to delete that now remember before we were able to bring in a reflective pass so i'm going to come back over here to effects and presets i'm going to type in extractor i'm just going to lift click drag that in right here where it says layers i'm going to do reflections only and then let's come down here to where mode is and i'm just going to screen it on here and this actually added like a nice reflective pass on here so if i let's find like a good mark right here so maybe right there so if i turn it off this is what it looks like and this is what our reflections look like when they're turned on which adds a little bit more sheen to it and so i don't want to have like the reflections right here you can still see it kind of like in these areas and everything like that so same thing i'm going to come back over to one second hit t on my keyboard to bring up opacity i'm going to bring this all the way down to zero then i'm going to add a keyframe hit shift page down twice 
to move it over to the right in my timeline hit it up 100 percent and now it started to add that reflective pass in there and there we go so now we have a nice cool calm logo animation and that's basically how i did it now if you have any more like plugins or anything like shine or stuff of that nature you can always add that as well but for this i'm going to keep it pretty basic because not everybody has those plugins the one last thing i could probably say is i'll probably add a glow to this right here because it's always nice to have a little glow effect so i'm going to type in glow in my fix and presets come all the way down here to the bottom i'm going to find a default glow under stylize drag that in there you can add you can see that it added a little bit of glow in here for glow intensity I'm going to do like 0.1. Let me turn this on and off so you can kind of see it. Just adds a little bit of that production value to our logo there. And so let's see. One last thing I could do. Actually, something else that comes in After Effects by default. We could add like a light sweep in here as well, which really adds a lot to our logo animation. So come back over here to Effects and Presets. And I'm going to type in Sweep. And then I'm going to look for CC Light Sweep right here. And I'm going to click and drag this in and let's say maybe we want to start having our sweep activate at like three seconds. And so I'm going to take this little null point right here. I'm just going to move this over to the right. And so you can see what's going to happen basically as I drag this through. You can see that it's adding like this cool sheen across our logo in which we can come over here to the attributes and play around with these a little bit. So maybe for width, we make it like 75, something like that for sweep intensity, bump this up a little bit engine intensity somewhere around there 65 and then i'm just going to left click drag this off the screen and then right here where it says center i'm going to leave a keyframe and let's maybe bump this up to like five seconds in our timeline here somewhere around there and i'm going to left click and hold shift and just move this over and the reason i'm holding shift is because even if i move my mouse up and down it's still only going to go left and right so that's going to give us a nice smooth transition over and now let me hit Control S and let me hit zero on a keyboard just to play our logo animation back and see what we got. And now that we have our RAM preview played all the way up, let's start it at, or stop it at five seconds here. I'm gonna hit end on my keyboard just to end my timeline there. Hit zero again to play this back in real time. And there we go. So hopefully this helped you guys out. And one last thing, everything is gonna be in my store in which the links are down below. So if you want access to any of these project files, make sure you get to my storefront and download everything that correlates with this chapter. And until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll catch you guys in the next chapter. I'll see you guys soon, day three. Take care.